Well, hello. Today is Friday. Fantastic Friday. We are launching you into an incredible weekend. Great things that we're expecting. And uh, man, this has been a fantastic journey over the last several weeks. Talking about revival, praying for revival, understanding what it takes to experience revival. And so between the messages on Sundays and then these devotional moments, I pray that you've made some progress. And uh, man, if anything, this has created a hunger and a thirst inside of you for more of God. Uh, I want to finish this devotional thought out of the book of Philippians. And uh, I love the Apostle Paul. I call him the Colossal Apostle. Uh, wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. He's probably one of the world's greatest evangelists. And his writings have shaped modern Christianity like no other. He's writing this particular letter uh, while he He's in prison. And so here he is in a very difficult situation and he's reflecting on his journey. Read with me in Philippians chapter 3, starting with verse 7. Paul says these words. He says, I once thought these things were valuable, but now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. Yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I've discarded everything else, counting it all as garbage so that I could gain Christ and become one with him. I no longer count on my own righteousness through obeying the law. Rather, I become righteous through faith in Christ. For God's way of making us right with himself depends on faith. Uh, these are fantastic words. I mean, if you think about the, the historical setting and the, the season of church life in which Paul wrote these words, I mean, this is very transformational because he's coming up against an old religious system. In fact, he's reflecting on his journey, where he once was, what God has done in him, and where he is now in the Lord. Uh, th this is a picture of a person who experienced radical personal revival. The transformation in the life of the Apostle Paul was as dramatic as anybody has ever seen. He goes from being a terrorist to an evangelist. I love that. You know, revival will change you from the inside out. It'll change how you think. It'll change your priorities. It'll change your pursuits. I mean, Paul genuinely had a personal experience with the Lord, and he's reflecting on where he once was. He used to be a Pharisee of Pharisees, a, a Hebrew of Hebrews. He, he was so devoted to the ritual religious law, to the letter of the law. And many of you know, he persecuted the early church. There was such fear and terror in those early believers. Just the mention of his name. I mean, at that time it was Saul. To mention Saul's name evoked fear in those early church moments. And now Saul becomes Paul because he had an experience on the Damascus Road. And he's talking about all the changes that have taken place. He said, you know, I used to be so devoted to religion. But all that now is gone. Uh, Paul, when he was persecuting the church, he thought he was doing God a favor. You know, sometimes people are really passionate, but they're confused. And, and here, uh, Paul was so devoted to um, uh, 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 expelling, you know, um, 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 doing away with the church. He thought, well, I'm going to do this unto the Lord and get rid of these Christians. And yet as he's riding on the Damascus Road, he has a, an experience with the Lord that changed everything. Paul said, you know, I used to think that obtaining righteousness through legalism and religion was the way to go. But now I consider all these things worthless. Now, what's Paul saying here? He's saying it's useless to use rules and rituals to become righteous. I want you to know this, that sometimes religion can be such a bondage. I talked to, in fact, I was talking to a guy two days ago, and we were talking about this very concept. And I told him, look, I, I'm, I'm not religious. I'm not about religion. I know people look at me, well, Mike, you're a pastor. Certainly you're religious. Nope. <laughs> I've never been religious. I've been in a relationship with God for a long time. And there's so much freedom 
in a relationship. And Paul had this realization that if I'm going to be in right standing with the Lord, it can't be pursuit of a rule or a ritual. It can't be a form of religion. I've got to have a relationship. Righteousness doesn't come from what I can produce. Righteousness is the result of what God has done through Jesus for me. Uh, There's a massive transformation in how Paul's thinking here. He had a revelation. Some of us need a revelation. We need a Damascus Road experience to change the way that we think. Uh, Paul had some thoughts about God that were inaccurate. And God had to change his thinking. You know, I wonder if we wake up and we say, Lord, are there some thoughts that I'm having that aren't pleasing to you? Change how I'm thinking about certain things so I can have a right perspective and right relationship with you. Paul said, I count those things as worthless. In other words, the the word count in the Greek means to forfeit. He said, I've just given all that up. Man, what a contrast. Everything he once worked for, he now sees as waste. Man, he's just giving up his old way of thinking. He said, you know what? I was wrong. Man, I was passionate. I was sincere, but I was wrong. And here God began to redirect all of that energy and focus and put him on a right path with right thinking in a right relationship. I just say these things to encourage you because revival, it's not about following a list of rules. Now, don't get me wrong. As disciples of Christ, we embrace disciplines. You know, there are spiritual disciplines that I do. I read the scriptures every day. I spend time in prayer every day. I have a daily routine of worship to the Lord. And these disciplines have served me well. But I don't do them out of duty. I do them out of desire. You see, when you have a relationship, those things move from duty to desire. You can pursue all those things without God and not be in any better situation than you were before. But when you truly pursue a love for the Lord, then these things begin to follow. Righteousness is not something we deserve. It's not something we earn, but it's something God bestows upon us when we receive it by faith. This is so good. He said, uh, uh, I've become one with him. I no longer count my own righteousness through obeying the law. Rather, I've become righteous through faith in Christ. God's way. God's way of making us right with himself. It depends on faith. I'm so thankful for the faith of the Apostle Paul and his faithfulness to the Lord. You know, your faith today, it's not only blessing you, but it has a benefit for those around you. Now, my prayer for you is that you would begin to sense this love relationship with the Lord and out of that begin to pursue, not from duty, but from desire, a more intimate relationship with Him. Uh, I'm so thankful. I'm uh, thankful for your commitment to learn and study and grow together. I'm thankful for the example of those who've gone before us. We, we've studied out of the life of Moses and out of the life of David and here even the Apostle Paul. These are great examples for us. My challenge to you today is this. I, I believe you can find a new depth and a new place in God that you've never been before if you just simply pursue a love relationship with the Lord. God, how can I love you more today? God, I want to, I want to serve you. I want to know you greater. And let that be the prayer of your heart each and every day. And watch what God begins to open up in your life. God took Paul from being a terrorist to an evangelist. And that evangelist turned this world upside down. What can God do through you? Amen. Can I pray for you this morning? Uh, Father, thank you so much for the reminder that you've given us how you have transformational power. God, it's in your word. And God, we sense that spirit working within each and every one of us, Lord. Uh, God, I pray that today we would be better than we were yesterday. God, that we would be stronger today than we were yesterday. God, give us better understanding today, more wisdom today than we had yesterday. And Lord, I thank you from faith to faith, glory to glory. God, we're getting better. God, I pray boldness over your people. God, I pray that as we enter into this new season, God, that we would be fueled by the fire of the Holy Ghost. And God, that we would use that flame to illuminate the path for others to walk on. In Jesus' name, amen.